Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Justice and as you can see by the title, today I'm going to be giving you guys the first official update on my course. If you don't know, I am currently in the process of making an e-course. It is a beginner's guide to how to use Adobe Illustrator. And in some of my previous videos, I told you that I wanted to take you guys along with me in like real time um, along this process of making my course and not just coming here after it's been done and successful and you know, telling you what I did in the past. I wanna tell you guys what I'm doing right now and what it's been like and what I've been experiencing. And so yeah, this is the first official update. Um, you will see that I will have posted a short of what my course currently looks like what it looks like behind the scenes and like in the making and another short video just like a regular video last night I think I'm posting it by the time you see this it'll have to come out last night and it's basically showing you uh, a deeper look inside of like what I'm editing and like how I'm putting the course together okay so enough with all of that I'm gonna break this down into five sections and we're gonna cover basically kind of the changes and the updates that have happened since I started working on my course so the first one I'm going to talk about is what I call my emotional state and like self-motivation so currently I would say that I am now at this point in time emerging out of one of my down moments during this process so over the last few weeks there have been kind of like up and downs of me doing this course and just like full transparency just being open honest vulnerable there have been quite a few times where I have felt like I have absolutely no right or authority to be making this course and like I don't know what I'm doing I need to just stop and just basically suffering from imposter syndrome um, I'm sure most of us who have ever pursued anything have suffered from this and so it has happened uh, quite a few times during this process of making my course and I, it's really just one of those things that I have to work through each time it happens and I will say that now I'm kind of coming out of the the down the, the like psyching myself out portion for this week like this past week I will say that I definitely was really hard on myself and, and feeling really bad about my course which is crazy because the week before I was super happy about it and I was talking to people about it and I thought I was doing such a good job and like I would look at it and I would be proud and then like just this past week I just felt like the complete opposite I looked at it and I just wasn't happy I felt like it wasn't that good it didn't look that good and so yeah it's just a series of up and downs so First, let me explain to you why I think I was feeling down when I when I think about it and when I think about what has helped me get out of it um, I like to do a lot of reflection so I can kind of understand my feelings and how to work around them and so what I think it was was I was in a space in a, a phase in my course where I was forcing myself to try to do a certain thing so I have been telling myself before I move on to recording my videos my demos I want to have all the written content done so I have eight modules um, and if you've seen the videos and a bonus module and so I was trying to get everything that's written all the descriptions the definitions all of that out the way before I did any of the videos and so I think what happens is you kind of get tired of doing that one thing and especially if like maybe you're just not up for the, all the writing and I definitely feel like that's where I was because I still haven't finished the writing and so I was trying to force myself to stay in this one phase and complete it before moving on and because I was in it for so long and I kept looking at what I had done and it just it was feeling like the same it was just feeling more or less the same like I wasn't making any headway or anything like and so I think that that's really what started bringing me down like I wasn't doing a good job now today something that helped a lot and made me feel that excitement again that I have been feeling when I first started doing it and like when I when I'm really excited and working on my course so I just picked up my microphone the other day which I will talk about when we get to the 
software and equipment part of the video and so today I started recording the demos I was like you know what I still have two modules where I need to do some more writing but I just need to do something different and feel like I'm, I'm accomplishing something I'm just not in a space to do the writing right now and so I, I started doing my demos today and I didn't finish them I actually have to re-record them because it started raining and my computer is weird which we'll talk about in equipment and software but yeah but anyway even though I have to re-record them when I started doing the recordings and I was doing my demos and the narration and I started explaining things I started to feel a lot more confident in what I was doing and what my course is about so at one point when I was you know feeling down I was thinking you know this is nobody's gonna want to buy this nobody's gonna think it's valuable or anything or they'll know all of this stuff and think it's bad but then when I started explaining it in my demos and I realized that actually what I am saying what I am the the value I am bringing to this course a lot of people might appreciate that and they might not know it and I kind of do know what I'm talking about here and so it just kind of made me feel a lot better when I moved into a different phase and kind of started reaffirming my knowledge and basically my authority to do this course and so that definitely helped me feel better and so I am excited to get to the demos the recording the rest of the demos because they're nowhere near finished I have to definitely work out some issues which is going to lead me to my next topic which is software and equipment let me take you from the top okay so listen this is the part of the video where you probably are going to find the most value okay I know some of y'all are probably like me and when I'm watching videos I'm like get to the point and I start skipping this is not the part you want to skip this is the part you want to watch okay so when it comes to equipment when I initially started this course or started outlining and designing it I was only going to do it on Google Docs for my outline, Google, um, what's it called? Google Slides, and I was going to do some video recordings. Now, I always knew I had to buy a software for the video recordings because, as some of you have seen in my Illustrator videos on YouTube, when I use my game bar to screen record, you can't see the panels, and I didn't know that for a long time. So, I knew I would have to get a video edit, a video recording software. So, those are the things I was going to do. It was going to be real simple and I was going to put them in Teachable, not Teachable, Thinkific, and I was just going to call it a day. Now, what happened was I started looking for other jobs, a little side note here, but I promise it relates. Um, I started looking for other jobs and I, I was looking for a job in like customer service, like the work from home reps, just so I could be at home and have more time to myself. So. In my search on the career site, I came across this thing called instructional designer. And so I was like, oh wow, that sounds interesting. Anything with the word design in it, I have to like inquire because that's that was my major and that's what I do. I design things and lo and behold, the actual like definition, the job description is exactly what I'm doing with my course. And so I thought that was really interesting. And so I started, of course, researching more into that career field because I never knew that's what it was called, what I was doing. And it teaches you, it tells you in the skills section all the software you need to know. And so, of course, I started looking into these softwares. And apparently there's this thing called authoring tools that is specifically made to help you build a course. And so I was like, wow, you know, why did it not cross my brain to look for a course building like software with Adobe like of course the Adobe has everything but oddly enough Adobe the authoring tool for that is Adobe Captivate which is like MIA right now um, and apparently it's supposed to be replaced by Project Charm but Project Charm is nowhere to be found so I like I was looking for it but I couldn't find it and so then I went to this other one it's called Articulate 360 and I started learning about that it's, Within Articulate 360, you have Rise and then you have Storyline. Storyline appeals to me the most because it's the most complex and the one that you can make the most interactive and unique and very like personal. However, 
I needed this to be done quickly and efficiently so I did go with rice just for my first one I thought you know it's easy it's form based it's online this is the perfect software for this specific project so I went with rise 360 and I did this in my free trial free trial is gonna be a key word here guys okay I did it within my free trial I'm still in my free trial actually and I plan to be done before my free trial is up because articulate 360 is expensive also I needed to add this in right here I almost forgot the authoring tools for what I'm using um, rise 360 is it has improved the quality of my course exponentially okay like I was just gonna do basic PowerPoints and <laughs> screen recordings but now I'm able to do interactive features and like I could do click scenarios if I want to I have like interactive quizzes that I can do I also have a way to give assignments and I can give you files to work on which is what I am doing and that's something that I didn't even consider before until I started with this program so I am very happy with my choice to move forward with um, Rise 360 and I'm glad I found out about it it's kind of amazing and it just happened perfectly it's just perfect timing for me to figure out about this software so yeah that's the authoring tools now moving into the what is it called the recording is called um, Camtasia so initially I was recording with my game bar and the quality just wasn't there so of course I looked up the best screen recorder which is Camtasia you've probably heard of it if you have considered doing a course and it's been pretty great so far however I was also in my free trial for that one too keyword was and I was gonna stay in my free trial however this is important you cannot export your videos during the free trial without having without it having a watermark on it so I thought you could and I was definitely gonna try to get my finesse finesse it you know but you can't and so I ended up registering for I ended up buying it like um two weeks into my free trial because I needed to start exporting my videos and yeah I bought the student version which is about hundred and seventy dollars and if you are tight on money you can do what I did and I use Klarna for everything and I recommend Klarna because quad pay zip is now like charging you a finance fee which is weird so I'm gonna have to stop using them because I don't like that um, but yeah and then that just makes it even more affordable for you and so yeah Camtasia which is my video recording software you can also do little screenshots in Camtasia too and you can export those for free without a watermark okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is the equipment so I have a laptop it, I have a really small laptop it's a Samsung laptop I've had it for four years it's honestly my baby it's like a little two-in-one and it has a pen because I love me some Samsung notes okay however I was made aware by the geek squad that my laptop has a very it has only one vent and so it often gets overheated and it makes like this loud noise it's a fan and so it was causing feedback in my videos which is why I went out and I bought a microphone and I was like you know maybe if this microphone has like this little thingy it won't catch the feedback but it did so now I still have to kind of troubleshoot that and I'm still figuring it out but I have a few ideas and ways to kind of like combat that issue and so I will keep you posted on that but that is something to be aware of when you're recording near when you're recording videos and you have to talk or use sound you don't want a whole bunch of feedback in the background because it is distracting it's not like when I record these YouTube videos and I put like little background music like that covers up all the feedback like there's feedback now but you won't hear it because I cover it up with music I can't do that in my demos so I guess maybe I could maybe I could but I don't want to um so yeah that's what I'm going through with the equipment and the software okay now we're gonna move on to marketing this is gonna be very short okay I am still obviously in the marketing phase this video that you're watching right now is a form of marketing it's me trying to get 
eyes on what I'm doing um, by providing you with free value right here to that that will basically funnel you into my course so that's what I'm doing now I'm doing it on YouTube I've talked about it in past videos I still have more videos to film for YouTube for this series and what I'm doing um, like I told you I was definitely in a down period and so I definitely have the content but I just wasn't posting it so I'm gonna post it and so another way that I am trying to market is through Instagram just kind of putting things out there on Instagram um, I'm not it's always hard when you don't have a, a large following already it kind of puts up one more barrier to finding customers or students and so I'm trying to work through that because I also don't have a large following on Instagram um, I'm also <laughs> I'm not a TikTok fan. I'm not a TikTok user. I've tried it several times. It's just not for me. I will give it another go just because I will exhaust all my options for marketing. But I will say one of the best ways that I have been marketing so far is just through speaking to people and talking to people, which I am kind of proud of myself because I'm not the type of person who goes out and promotes myself a lot. I don't really feel comfortable doing that like I'm not a person who can really sell myself like some people can and they'll convince you to do absolutely anything buy anything from them I'm just not one of those people I prefer prefer more genuine approaches and I like to help people who need it you know what I'm saying but I will say my current job even though I don't like it I'm trying to leave um, I am surrounded by a lot of creatives and so that has helped me a lot with speaking to people and not feeling like I'm trying to sell them something that they don't need or I'm trying to get them involved in something that they don't find interest in because a lot of us are creatives, a lot of us there. I've noticed you use Illustrator um, for design, for fashion, for so many things. And I've met a few good, good people who I've talked to and told them about my course. And you know, I have things in the works which will lead us to a different topic which will lead us to another one of these um, main topics for this video that we'll get to soon but for my marketing that's basically what I've been doing and it's what I'm going to continue to do and if I have any more ideas or if you guys have any more ideas let me know and we can discuss in the next video okay so the fourth topic in this video um, it was the perfect segue we just talked about um, talking to people I call it quality insurance So basically, it's me making sure my course is actually good. So when I spoke to you guys about talking to people at my job who actually know Illustrator or are interested in it, that's a lot of what I've been doing. I've been putting out feelers for people who are good at Illustrator and people who would be interested in helping me with this course once I finish. And how are they gonna help me? Basically, I need two types of people. I need a person who knows Illustrator very well, who can basically check me, who can check my work and see if everything that I'm saying is indeed accurate. Like, even, you know, a person who's been doing this for years can make a mistake, can miss, you know, can say something wrong misspeak I don't know if that's a word I know misspoke is a word but you get what I'm saying you know I've had teachers at, at my university who have misspoke before and you know every, nobody's perfect it's an ever-growing software that's always evolving and so what I want is someone who knows Illustrator just as well as I do or even better to look through what I'm saying and make sure that I'm teaching you guys correctly and everything that I'm saying is true you know and if it's not then I need to fix it so that's the first thing I need for quality assurance. The second thing I need, I've been putting out feelers for people who may want to learn the software. So once the software is done and you know my expert tells me, yep, this looks good, this is good quality, and it's helpful to people, then I'm gonna find somebody who knows absolutely nothing about Illustrator because I need to actually test that they feel like they're learning. And the modules, even though I think that I'm explaining it right, it has to actually work and teach people who don't know anything how to use illustrator okay my dog is here moving the thing and so i just need people who want to learn the program i do have one volunteer 
I do want another one because this volunteer knows a little bit about illustrators. So I want somebody who's a complete blank slate, knows nothing, and they can tell me if they learn something and I can kind of measure their success. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of what I need right now. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about, the last update I have is, I don't even know if I should consider it an update, but it was kind of like something that changed a little bit, um, is the timeline. So I told you guys I wanted to release this course before the end of the year. That is still, like, I'm very firm on that. That is actually, side note, I should have said this earlier, that is one of the things that helped me get through my imposter syndrome because one of the main reasons I did this course is because I wanted to do something and complete it. Um, I don't mean to sound, I don't, I'm not the type of person who does how much stuff and doesn't complete it. I have a lot of projects that go on, but they're very, very long-term projects, like writing a book. You know, that's what I'm working on, but that's not gonna be done for years. I wanted to do something and complete it. You know, have a task that I started, and from start to finish, I can see my dogs are over there playing tug of war. I don't know why. Okay. So anyway, basically what I'm saying is, I just wanna complete something. It's very important for me to complete this course just to kind of have something that I feel like I accomplished. So it's not even about making money and I really do enjoy it. Part of it is also about fun, but it's about completing a task. And so I'm very firm on my timeline. I'm not trying to, you know, be loose on it and give myself a whole bunch of extra, what do you call it? Like a lot of leeway because then that you just keep pushing it back pushing it back you have to have some discipline you know so the timeline is very firm I am going to release it before the end of the year period now with the authoring tools that I told you about it definitely made my process significantly faster like I feel like if I hadn't had those negative feelings and if I had my not had issues with my computer I would be done with this by the end of probably before the end of September um, but that is when I that's my plan to be done with the actual like course material in the software and then I want to start in October with getting the the quality assurance that we just talked about so those experts and then those novice to come and look at the course and then tweaking it in any way necessary and that may take I don't know how long that's going to take. It just depends on how long it takes the person to complete the course. So I don't imagine the course is going to take very long. I really try to keep it straight to the point. So yeah, I know I said I have like writing in there and descriptions in there, but it is not exhaustive at all um, because that is not how I learned. So I'm not going to go and teach you a way that I didn't necessarily learn. Um, the way we learn in school, and I'm a firm believer in this method, is project based that's how you learn to do things in Illustrator and so the reason for this course here is just to kind of give you that foundation because everybody you know can't go to college and learn it and so just to give you that foundation before you jump into being project-based and and trying to just learn as you go on a commission or something you know and even in school I could have benefited from a course like this so yeah, I kind of feel like when I started the authoring with the authoring tools, my time like got pushed up and I was going to be done significantly faster. But then I also was like, with the quality assurance and the people, that I don't know how long that's going to take. But I'm going to make sure that they know it has to be done before the end of the year, before December. <laughs> so that's kind of my timeline. Um, it could be released in December, it could be released in November, it just depends on my people and yeah i think that's all i have to say so i'm kind of super excited about it i'm glad that i have gotten back in or i'm still getting back into a really good headspace even now just talking to you guys on this video has really helped me um it's helping me feel better about what i'm doing and and more confident in it and that i could actually help people be better at illustrator and, and you know get their first entrance into Adobe Illustrator and graphic design so that is all I have to say today that is my full update for like the first month or so of me doing my course that is everything 
and i hope you guys will stick around for my next videos i'm going to make this a series so you will be with me pretty much throughout my process and also don't forget to watch the video before this one i'm gonna link it up here and in the description below okay that is what i call a fast play so that is you just watching me work and i like to do that a lot because i feel like it's fun i feel like it's like satis satisfying um so yeah that is all i have for you guys today don't forget to like subscribe and talk to me in the comments and i will see you guys next time